Hello there, good to see you. Welcome to another session on Internet Web Programming. In this session, we're going to start off with a new concept called Node.js. First, we'll understand what is Node.js, why we need it. Next, we'll see how to install Node.js and run our first JavaScript file using Node.js. So let's start. What is Node.js, why we need it? Say we were using JavaScript. We have learned JavaScript earlier. And we were using JavaScript for what? So client enters, say the user enters data using a form. And this form is rendered on the browser. So when the data is entered by our user, we were using JavaScript for validating this input data. So browsers were using JavaScript, were executing JavaScript code. So JavaScript was used as a front-end validation language. So JavaScript was running inside a browser and browsers were using the JavaScript V8 engine. This engine was used by the browser to convert a JavaScript code to machine language. So the purpose of JavaScript was to validate the input data and it was running inside the browser and browsers were using JSV8 engine to convert this JavaScript code to machine language for execution. Around 2009, they came out with this idea that is, uh, why can't we take JavaScript outside the browser, run it like a server-side script? So when you're using JavaScript as a server-side script, we need a lot of other libraries. So we need a lot of libraries for that to happen. Like JavaScript should be able to communicate with the operating system, should be able to communicate with the network, should be able to access the files, and uh, should also be able to communicate with DB servers, so when you talk about a server-side script, uh, it, it should also be working as a server. So you need a lot of libraries. You call those libraries as modules. So JavaScript plus all these modules. Not only that, say for instance, when you're working with uh, JavaScript and MongoDB, you need all the packages that you can connect to MongoDB. So it's not just uh, JavaScript it's javascript plus a lot of uh, modules and packages that will enable javascript to act like server-side script so javascript plus these modules and libraries together we call that to be node.js what is node.js it's an open source so it's an open source runtime environment So what is Node.js? It is an open source runtime environment to run your JavaScript code as the client side script. To make JavaScript run outside the browser, what is that you provide JavaScript with? You provide the JavaScript V8 engine. So we are using the same engine. Not only that, we are also using a lot of modules and packages that enable us to run JavaScript outside the browser and you call that environment as Node.js. Why Node.js? We have already learned so many server-side scripts. We know uh, how to write PHP. We know how to write ASP, JSP. Now, what is this Node.js? How it is better? Say, Node.js is more scalable and it is faster. So, Node.js is scalable and faster and it is used by some of the popular organizations across the globe. So let's not go into the details on why it is more scalable, why it is more faster when compared to other architectures. For now, let's be convinced that it's more scalable and faster and it's used by some of the popular organizations. So let's learn it. What's wrong in it? So let's uh, take a look at how to install Node.js. So installation of Node.js, uh, you go to this uh, link, nodejs.org. And then you download the latest version of Node.js by clicking on this. Say, uh, right now I think the version is 18 point something. I have installed 14.15.3, uh, which is an older version. You can select the latest version. Click on that. Then it will ask you to save a file. Save the file. Save the file to a specific folder. And click on that file. So your installation process starts. Click on next. Accept the license terms. Click on next. I just left it to the default folder, click on next and uh, click on next. Automatically install the necessary tools. 
I just uh, check this, click on next. And the installation starts. It's a quick installation. It will not take much of a time. Click on finish. After Node.js is installed, you can verify that. You can go to command prompt and then you can type node-v. So you'll get the version of Node.js running in your system. Say, we'll see how to run a first JavaScript file using Node.js on VS Code. Let's go to VS Code. So on VS Code, you create a folder and uh, you create a JavaScript file. So I have created first.js here. I'll just write some JavaScript code, console.log. Hope this works. Then life will be great. Even if it's not working, it's going to be great anyway. So this uh, thing, this JavaScript file, how is that we are going to run? You go to the terminal. So terminal, new terminal, you're going to get the terminal. You just type node, node is the command and then the file name first.js. So this is the file name. When you click enter, you're going to have that uh, message log. Okay, life is great because it works. Hope this works, then life will be great. So we have uh, installed node.js and we have run our first JavaScript file. We also have something called uh, nodemon, which is a package that you can install. For instance, uh, npm, that is the node package manager. So it manages a list of packages that you can install for your project. Say npm install. So install this package, nodemon. So let's install nodemon. So what is the use of nodemon? Say whenever I um, want to run, I should be typing node first.js. So when you install nodemon, what will happen is whenever you make any changes, it's going to recognize the change in your code and then it's going to run the code for you. And there's no need for you to type node first.js every time you want to run this uh, change. So let's see uh, whether a package is getting installed. So it's installing this package nodemon. Okay, package is installed. Next, what we'll do is we'll type nodemon and then the file name. So it's going to monitor this file from now on for any changes. And if you're going to make any changes, it's going to automatically run your file and you'll be able to see the output. Okay, so starting node first.js, life will be great. So hope this works. We'll make some change and see uh, let's see whether it's restarting the output. Hope this works. What to say here? Life is not great. Something like that. So let me save. Upon save, you can see it's picking up that uh, change and then it's going to run the code. See, hope this works. Life is not great. So instead of typing node first.js again and again for every change you make and run your code, when you just install nodemon, for any change, it's going to find that and run your code. I hope you were able to follow why we need Node.js, how to install Node.js and how to install a package called Nodemon so that it picks up your changes and runs the code for you. With that, we are coming to an end of this uh, session on Node.js. In the next session, we'll be taking a look at how to connect to the Mongo database from Node.js and the packages required for that connection to work out. So, if you have any questions, you can leave those questions as comments below. Thank you for your time. Thank you for listening. Take care.